Hi, Lauren. Uh, this is Ahmed Hi. from Gaper. How are you today? I'm doing well, thanks. I'm happy to be here. So in the remote world, are, are you in the remote world right now or you're in a physical world somewhere? Yeah, so I've been um, working remotely for about a little over a year now. I'm in the digital marketing and content creation industry, and I've been working freelance on short-term contracts, um, creating content for different companies uh, for quite a while now. So I was lucky to go remote before the pandemic kind of hit um, and kind of master that before everyone else had to. Right, so you, you are not the follower one, right? Who are in the pandemic by, not by choice, right? Who are remote, not by choice, but by pandemic. So. How did it turn out? When, when was the time when you thought that remote, you want to go remote, right? And we are talking about pre-pandemic times. Yeah, so um, I've always been a bit of a free spirit and a bit of an adventurer. So I really like the work-life balance that I got with working remotely. Um, I was able to balance my contracts and make my own schedule while I got to travel a little bit. Um, so I did a year uh, winter snowboarding and then I actually bought a van with my boyfriend and was living in a van traveling around Canada um, while I still got to maintain all my work projects and create content for different companies. It was pretty cool. That's quite interesting. How does the connectivity work? Do you, is it easy to stay connected all the times while you are on the road? Because that's a tough one. Yeah. So um in this world, it's actually quite easy to stay connected. Uh, most major towns and cities have great service and even free Wi-Fi in different places. Um, I did encounter when I was traveling through the mountains of BC, it definitely was a little bit of a challenge in the way that you just straight up lose signal in certain places. Um, but if you have a pretty good schedule and good time management, you can kind of book your meetings around the times that you know you're gonna be in a town with good Wi-Fi and get some work done in there as well. Right. So what's a typical day for you? Uh, what kind of uh, work you love to do, love doing and for which companies and uh, what the value, do, what's the kind of value addition you, you do in your uh, life cycle? Yeah, so um, a lot of my work is creative based. So I create content for social media um, through like, graphics, videos, photos. Um, I also do freelance kind of marketing services. So I'll help companies kind of define their brand, work with their customers, establish their target markets, et cetera. So it's kind of just a lot of meetings with different companies, kind of figuring out their strengths, um, weaknesses, what they need from me and um, until they feel like they think. Right. So uh, how, how's been your experience? So let's say uh, you, you, you work from Canada uh, in, in this particular time zone. So how does your team distribute among different time zones? Yeah, so my current team um, is based all over the world. We have people working in the Philippines, Europe, Middle East, all over and uh, Canada alone, we have people working in completely different. It's interesting. We work at a company right now that everyone can make their own hours and no one's locked in by the typical nine to five. You kind of have freedom to do the work when you need to. Um, so this allows us to kind of schedule meetings and face to face time when it's needed. A, it's a little bit limited. Um, it's only limited to the bare minimum. Um, and when we all come together, some people it will be 10 p.m. at night, some people will be 9 a.m. in the morning. Um, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. Um, but since everyone can kind of, no one's locked in by the nine to five if you're working a 10 p.m meeting maybe you don't start your work day until 12 o'clock etc you can kind of have the freedom to work when you want to work which is great so people talk about pros and cons of going remote right so can we count it as as a con of going remote that people working in different time zones it, it gets difficult to communicate sometimes or or you think otherwise I mean, most definitely, it's all kind of in the nature of how your company is set up. So with the pandemic, a lot of companies weren't ready to go virtually or go completely remote, which even though this was a trend that we were going to see years down the road, most likely anyways, um, the pandemic kind of kicked us all into gear and was like, this needs to happen now. Um, so it's kind of great the way my company was set up specifically that I'm working for right now. They were already remote before the pandemic even hit. So you kind of 
with the way it works with me, I report to my supervisor once a month, once a week, sorry, and he kind of lays out the tasks that I'm working on for that week. So then I ha can make my own hours, work whenever I want, as long as I have that set of tasks done by the end of the week, um, which is really great. So I know sometimes I'll have to reach out to someone and they may not be online. That's fine. I'll just move on to the next task and go back to it when I have the information I need from someone in a different time zone, which is great. Right. So, uh, what's what's your what's the story behind your company uh, for being remote right because that's pre-pandemic days why do you think you, you, the company you work for decided to go remote and how how did it benefit it from it yeah so my company is that i'm currently working for is kind of a global language six company they collect data on voice recognition and use it for voice recognition technology so in the nature of that industry alone they need people who are fluent in many languages and different cultures since their whole goal is to help companies expand in a global market um, so with that they do need people working all over the world so they didn't really have a choice in going remote because they weren't able to work they do have one physical office location but it's impossible for everyone with all the different cultures and language they need to be located in that one office um, so just the nature of the industry, a lot of the linguistics industry in general is kind of located all over the world. You mentioned, a, uh, I, I heard a very interesting word, that's culture. Because when you, when you talk about remote, culture is the most difficult thing to keep up for a company. Mm -hmm. So how important is the role of that culture in the productivity of individuals and productivity as a team? I think that... I will not doubt there is definitely value in a collaborative, creative group thinking environment and creating that space is super important to a team culture and be productivity and innovation even in a company. Um, but I think companies are just being forced to redesign what that space is and they're realizing that that space can be taken online through Zoom meetings, through Skype meetings, through group, even group just like spitballing in a text-based conversation. Um, so these spaces, just because we don't have a physical space anymore, doesn't mean the spaces aren't there. Like we will have team meetings with 30 people sharing ideas, just joking about their weekend, just having a team morale kind of thing. But those can now happen online from the comfort of everyone's home on everyone's own hours type of deal. Right. Makes sense. So where are we heading in the future? So where, where do you see remote going in years to come? Is it like here to stay or the world will move back? Uh, to the way it was before the pandemic? I think it is definitely here to stay. I've always been a believer in the fact that I think companies are always going to go remote, pandemic or not. It was inevitable. That's what the younger generation, the kind of millennial generation like myself, we value the work-life balance more than our previous generation. We like the ability to work from wherever we want, not always being in the office, office a few days a week type of deal. And, I, and companies were obviously adapting to become appealing to our generation, especially because the younger generation is a generation that will jump around to multiple jobs. So when one's offering more perks or a different lifestyle that they're craving, they're more likely to leave their current company for, for a different one. So I always saw that as companies were going more flexible in their work, work hours, work lifestyle, where they're actually doing their work, was always a change that was going to happen. And I think this pandemic just kind of kick-started it and that this is something that we're going to be seeing for a while. And I'm even seeing companies right now, they're not renewing their office lease, lease spaces and they're not, they're just like permanently telling their employees, if you don't want to come back to work, that is fine. We can see that you're being effective and efficient worker from the comfort of your own home. So if you feel like that's where you work best, we don't need you to come into the office type of deal. Right. So if I ask you clearly, what are the major three roadblocks as compared to when you go remote, right? So what are the biggest three things you need to resolve as a team uh, in, in the remote environment? What would you suggest? I think, well, great. the greatest roadblock right now is just like a change happened and the companies weren't ready for it. So a lot of them didn't have the practices and protocols and rules and structure in their company that's kind of required to go remote. Mm -hmm. um, when going remote, you kind of need set working hours that everyone's online at the same time. You kind of, As flexible as it is, there's always going to be a few things. Um, that need to stay in place to ensure that you have an efficient workforce. And a lot of companies didn't have that, which could be a huge roadblock because you have people working from home, not knowing what they're doing, no direction in their jobs, which is never a good thing. Um, 
So I think it's really just kind of the biggest roadblock is the communication as an organization and just creating those teams and those workspaces again, recreating them online. It's not hard to do, but it is something that needs to be done um, by companies and they weren't really sure on how to do that. It took them a while. Like we're kind of seeing it more so now we're about six months into the pandemic um, and now companies are coming around and creating efficient workspaces online. But in the beginning, there was definitely a time of flux where a lot of companies didn't know what they were doing. Right. So uh, at Gaper, it's, it, we are the bigger, biggest advocates of going remote, right? We have, for the last many months before the pandemic, we were uh, the biggest advocates that you need to go online, you need to go remote, that, that's the future. If somebody is sitting uh, five hours away from you or five, uh, maybe uh, five hours flight away from you, that's not a good reason to let that uh, expertise uh, not to help you like you need to get those people on board right and you need to get the best teams going so that's what uh, Gaper is all about so how important is it for for setups like Gaper and there are other similar companies as well in in the days to come and how can we help the companies like yours or other companies uh, to capitalize on uh, remote as well as they can i think that they honestly be like a mental and communal shift towards being open to remote work because you know it's more like working remotely between two employees it's definitely a give and take you can't have everything you need to do your work right away and flexible hours is just something that comes along with remote work you need to be able like i said to oh, I can't get that information right now. I can't complete that task. Hey, I'll come back to that. I'll move on to the next task. But there are companies out there that want things done right away, right now. You need everything you need to get your work done immediately. And if we have that mindset continually, then remote work is never going to work. But in the kind of individual roles where you're kind of your, your own team, it works amazing. And I think it really, you limit yourself on your talent if you are saying that someone cannot work for your company just based on their geographic location. Like even the way we do it where you report to your superior once a week, that can be once a day, that can be twice a day, as long as you find that period of time between both of your schedules that works for both of you um, and allows you to communicate in that sense. And then you have what you need to get the work done on your own time which is great. And I mean, even I will admit there are some times where it's 9 p.m. at night and I'm jumping on a 20 minute call or I'm emailing someone to 10 p.m. at night just because that's their time zone. But I take that as a, yes, it's not ideal, but I think about the flexible and freedom of the lifestyle I get to live. And I said, that's completely worth it. That's totally fine to me. Right, that's, that's the trade-off. That's the trade-off you need to see that. Yeah. Are you flexible in your timings uh, in terms of work and in terms of uh, your personal plans or recreation or whatever? you want to do in your life. So uh, yeah. it, it's good to see that when someone finds the best mix, because mm -hmm. what, what I see mostly is that people are tilted towards one side. If somebody's working, he's like working as a workaholic and not giving time to their loved ones uh, as compared to someone else who, who, who's not able to keep up on their professional lives. So uh, I'm happy even to myself, see that. Sorry, so, even myself, it's like when I'm looking to apply to jobs, I absolutely love the fact that I'm not limited by my geographical location. I can work, live in Ontario, work for a company in Vancouver, work for a company in Nova Scotia on opposite sides of the country. I'm not limited by where I get to apply. I can apply to any job in Canada because I know I can do it from the comfort of my home. And that's just me, one person in my own country. Imagine if you opened up the entire world to being able to apply to jobs, the vast amount of talent you would acquire is just completely worth any like any structural changes you'd have to make to your organization. Absolutely agree. So uh, Lauren, thank you so much. You know, we like to keep our podcast shorts so that people like okay. listening to them. So thank you so much for being on the show today. It was lovely having you and uh, listening directly from someone who's sitting remote. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I love being here. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Good you afternoon. Too. That's the beauty of remote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>